Now while there are a handful of 48MP cameras in the market, not all 48MP cameras are made the same. Presently, only Sony and Samsung are the only two camera sensor makers to offer camera sensors in 48 megapixel resolution. But when we use the Xiaomi Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Vivo V15 Pro to shoot a few photos, the results left us quite surprised. The Redmi Note 7 Pro uses the Sony IMX586 to shoot in 48 megapixel while the Vivo V15 Pro has the Samsung GM1 sensor. Ideally, both sensors should be capable of generating far more sharpness and detail than the standard 12 megapixel and 16 megapixel sensors. Now, Xiaomi also made tall claims about the 48 megapixel camera at the launch event by comparing it with the iPhone XS, OnePlus 6T, and whatnot. But it seems like the Redmi Note 7 Pro has a lot of catching up to do, not just against the flagships but with its nearest 48 megapixel competitor, the Vivo V15 Pro. One of the primary reasons for packing more pixels into the photo is the amount of detail you can see when zoomed in. Here's one sample shot in 48 megapixels showing objects that are far away. We zoomed in to see if we can recover details from that distance. The Vivo V15 Pro did a better job at reproducing the details. The text from the faraway building is clearer than what the Redmi Note 7 Pro gets. It's worth noting that the Vivo V15 Pro shoots in DCI P3 color space, so the overall colors look a little different, but you can clearly see the Vivo phone doing a better job than the Redmi Note 7 Pro, even though both are shot in 48 megapixel resolution. Now in the second sample, the difference become more apparent. The Vivo V15 Pro with the Samsung GM1 sensor seems to be far too adept at preserving details of objects that are far away as compared to the Sony IMX586 on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Next, we looked at the texture quality, clarity, and the sharpness of the photos taken in 48 megapixel using the two phones. Now, the first sample is of a historic tomb in Delhi's Lodi Garden. While both photos look great when seen as it is, but when you zoom in, the Vivo V15 Pro seems to be doing a better job. The edges of the bricks are far sharper on the Vivo V15 Pro, while on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, the sharp edges aren't that prominent. In this sample, both the petals of the orange flower as well as the flower buds are distinctly visible on the Vivo V15 Pro, while on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, it appears kind of blurred. Looking deeper, we figured it could be because the Redmi Note 7 Pro took the photo at a slower shutter speed as compared to the V15 Pro, which might be the reason for the resulting blur. Both photos were taken handheld, however, with shutter speeds of over 1 100th of a second, we have rarely seen blurred images. There's more to investigate here it seems and we might have to wait for another phone to corroborate the results. Next we went closer to see what's happening. Macro shots are a good indicator of how good the camera sensor is. The sharpness, clarity and the details are all higher on the Vivo V15 Pro while the Redmi Note 7 Pro's image looks like one taken from a standard 12 megapixel camera sensor. It's amazing the level of difference the Samsung sensor is able to produce, while the seemingly superior Sony IMX586 doesn't even come close. The results could just be a shortcoming of the Note 7 Pro. Xiaomi is indeed suggesting users to shoot more in the 12 megapixel format, where the camera uses pixel binning to generate much more clarity and sharpness. Now we will be exploring the difference in shooting in 12MP as compared to shooting in 48MP with the Redmi Note 7 Pro in another video in the future. But enough about sharpness and details, let's talk about dynamic range. Now both, both of these camera sensors are large format sensors so they should ideally be able to generate much more dynamic range than your standard 12MP and 16MP sensors. Sony in fact claims a 4 factor increase in dynamic range when you're shooting with the IMX 586 on this one and at least on the first sample that we saw Sony's claims kind of stood tall. The, in this sample the Redmi Note 7 Pro has far better dynamic range than the Vivo V15 Pro. The texture on the wall appears much more prominent on the Note 7 Pro while on the V15 Pro the portion is basically much darker with lesser details. Even the plants beside the pathway and the pathway itself are prominently different in both the photos with the Note 7 Pro offering more details and clarity in the highlights and shadows than the V15 Pro. Now in the second sample, however, the V15 Pro edges out the Note 7 Pro by a lot. 
the leaves have more color and you can make out the edges of the leaves while in case of the Note 7 Pro the leaves all have the same shade of green. The V15 Pro certainly clipped the highlights but that's expected when you're shooting against the sun. Even the wall on the V15 Pro's photo looks much brighter. Now based on what we saw, the Samsung GM1 sensor on the Vivo V15 Pro was clearly ahead of the Redmi Note 7 Pro using the Sony IMX586 when shooting in 48 megapixels. Now, while both the sensors sh can shoot in 48 MP, the, the approach to achieving 48 megapixel is quite different in both the sensors. Now, ideally, the Sony sensor should be ahead uh, because it uses uh, because it can generate 48 megapixels natively, while the GM1 sensor uses upscaling to generate 48 megapixel shots. But turns out the Samsung GM1 sensor on the Vivo V15 Pro is actually doing a better job than the Note 7 Pro in terms of uh, generating higher sharpness, more clarity and more details. But the Note 7 Pro seems to be ahead in terms of dynamic range. So, so that's all that we had to share with you guys today. Let us know what you guys thought of this comparison video in the comment section below. And also let us know what other phones you want us to compare. And for more videos like this, stay tuned to Digit.in. For the latest technology updates, subscribe to Digit.in and don't forget to hit the bell icon.